Today, I'm going to share with you real-life stories about rejection and how it affected the lives of Hans Christian Andersen, Michael Jackson, Joyce Mayer, and an abandoned child, and how God wants us to be. The Ugly Duckling is one of the most famous fairy tales written by Danish storyteller Hans Christian Andersen, published in 1843. The Ugly Duckling is a story of a plain little bird born in a barnyard. His brothers, sisters, and other birds and animals teased him for being different and ugly. So the little bird ran away from home. When a flock of swans came to the lake where he was in, the Ugly Duckling approached them. He was delighted to find that they accepted him and treated him like one of them. When the swans flew off from the lake, he spread his wings and joined them. Finally, he found a family who accepted him. It's been said that the author wrote the story based on his own experience as a little boy. He was teased for the shape of his nose and facial features and for his social awkwardness. However, like the ugly duckling's transformation from plain to beautiful, Anderson found beauty inside himself and grew up to be a world famous author. Rejection. The universal root to all of man's problems is rejection. Rejection is also our greatest fear. We go to great lengths to be accepted, and we go to greater lengths to avoid rejection. The worst feeling that anybody has ever felt is the feelings of rejection. Michael Jackson, the greatest, perhaps the greatest entertainer of all time, certainly one of them, told his rabbi friend of his before he died, he said, everything I've done in pursuing fame, this is his words exactly, everything I've done in pursuing fame, in honing my craft, was an effort to be loved because I never felt loved. He was the best, the best singer, the best dancer, the best writer, the best entertainer, performer, amazing. He lived for his father's approval, he lived for his father's acceptance. Rejection damages us each individually and uniquely. I do believe that one of the main things that Satan uses against people to keep them from going forward is rejection from those around them that they really want and need acceptance and approval from. And I remember one day when I was still like in my early 30s and God had filled me with the Spirit and called me to preach and our friends were rejecting us and laughing at me and telling me I was crazy and who do you think you are and all these things and, and I remember getting in my kitchen floor on my knees and I had that teaching on righteousness in my hand and I said God I don't even fully understand all this but I know that you're trying to do something in my life and if I lose every friend that I've got and everybody thinks I'm stark raving mad I'm gonna press forward with you and I'm not going away because I want to be here to encourage you that if you will go all the way through with God, oh, you will have a payday that will knock your socks off. Shortly after the Korean War, a Korean woman had an affair with an American soldier and she got pregnant. And he went back to the United States and never saw, she never saw him again. She gave birth to a little girl. The little girl looked different from all the other Korean children. She had light colored curly hair. And in that culture, children of mixed race were ostracized at the time by the community. In fact, many women would kill their children because they didn't want them to, be, to have to face such rejection. She did something that probably nobody in this room could ever imagine doing. She abandoned her little girl to the streets. The little girl was ruthlessly taunted by people. They called her the ugliest word in the Korean language. And it didn't take long for this little girl to draw conclusions about herself based on the way people treated her. For two years, she lived on the streets until finally she made her way to an orphanage. One day, word came that a couple from America was going to come and adopt a little boy in that orphanage. All the children in the orphanage got excited because at least one little boy was going to have hope and have a family. The next day, the couple came and they showed up, and this is what the girl recalled in her own words. It was like Goliath had come back to life. I saw this huge man with his huge hands lift up every baby, and I knew he loved every one of them as if they were his own. Then he saw me, she said, out of the corner of his eye. Now let me tell you, I was nine years old, but I didn't even weigh 30 pounds. I was scrawny. I had worms in my body. I had lice in my hair. I had boils all over me. I was full of scars. I was not a pretty sight, but the man came over to me, and I looked up at him, 
Then he took this huge hand and he laid it on my face. What was he saying? He was saying, I want this child. This child is for me. And if you can put yourself in the place of that little girl for a moment, with all our worms and all of our lice and all of our scrawniness or all of our bad attitudes and all of our rejections that we've been facing for, and our heavenly father comes to this earth in the form of Jesus. And what is he doing? He's laying his hand on each of our faces and he's saying, I want this child. This child is for me. Well, guess what? You are that child. And God is your father. And he doesn't just love you, but oh, how he loves you. And he doesn't just call you, but oh, how he's called you. Friends, we're not ugly ducklings after all, because we are all children of God, and we're born through the eyes of love.